Upon signing such a legal document, you are indirectly waiving your rights under the Constitution and lowering your status to that of a corporation that is created with the same exact name as you. The only way to reconcile your true name from the name of the corporation is to take notice that the corporation has its name in all capital letters. This is known as Capitus Diminutia Maxima. You may take notice that your driver's license, birth certificate, social security card, insurance cards, and more use all capital letters to legally represent the corporation with your name, not you. The corporation is known as an artificial person, whereas you, the human being, are known as a natural person. This deception goes even deeper when it comes to the courts that we attend. When showing up to court, you will notice that there are seats for witnesses behind a wooden fence or barrier. The defendant must cross through the entrance to the other side of the barrier where the plaintiff and judge sit. This act symbolizes the boarding of a ship. At this time, business can be conducted in maritime admiralty law. The judge, acting as captain or banker, is responsible for settling the balance between the two sides. This is why there is always a monetary value involved in any court case. The captain is simply dealing with banking and merchant disputes. Once the balance is paid, the case is closed. To turn the court case away from admiralty law where your rights are not protected, you must avoid agreeing to represent the artificial person. This is done by stating that you are the natural person. You don't have a first or last name because those imply corporate title. In a court case, you may state that the court takes judicial notice of your honor's oath of office. Every judge must take an oath of office to practice law, yet you must make it clear to the court and the jury that the judge is acting as judge and not banker. Remember that you are a natural human being of the earth. You are not governed by anything but your own consciousness. Laws are created within a society. The society that created the laws we see being enforced today is called the Law Society. Yet the most beautiful part of this entire deception is the fact that we are not part of the Law Society, so their laws do not apply to us. Judges, lawyers, and law enforcement officers, they're all part of a society. Within that society, they've created their own language that's deceptively similar to English. They have these little things called statutes, acts, and regulations that seem like laws but they really only apply to those within their society. So that basically means all the traffic violations, minimum age requirements, and everything except for damage to another person or their property doesn't really apply to the natural person. Laws only apply to those within the law society. The game being played is an illusion. You can simply choose to open your eyes and reclaim the freedom that you were born with bound by nothing but the limits of your imagination. These are just a few examples of assuring that your rights are being protected. By far, the most important line of defense against this deception is to be aware of the perversion of language and be absolutely aware of how you form your beliefs and concepts. In all forms of the perversion of language, there is a mirror reflection of this in the microcosm of the psyche. And the problem I see with humanity today is we don't truly know ourselves anymore. We have the 9 to 5 job, we have the house, the children, the bills, the television, the hobbies, and the errands that we run every single day, and we eventually begin to believe that this is who we are. You know, but who are we beneath the job title, beneath the status of mother or father, theist or atheist, Republican or Democrat, black or white, man or woman, who are we? Who are we deep down inside? We don't know because every time we hear an answer that we don't want to accept about ourselves, we deny it. We'll pass it off and project it onto somebody else and judge them for it. This is repression. And we see what repression is due to us on an individual level, but what about on a collective level of humanity? What happens when the whole world refuses to see what they truly
gradually are on the inside.